Uh, thank you, Program Director. VIPs, ladies and gentlemen, after the great discussion sessions we had this morning, we are getting to the maybe crux of the problem. South Africa and SADC have been through the years relative lucky with terrorism, uh, with some isolated cases. In the past five years, this has slowly changed. Maybe a quick introduction before we isolate the problem in SADC, a look at the terrorism and its core reasons for existence. Maybe as a start to this introduction, defining terrorism was not that easy. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims. Maybe a little bit uh, short-sighted and historical, if we really look at uh, Miriam and Webster, maybe this one is a little bit closer to home. The systematic and coercive use of terror, defined as violent or destructive acts, committed by groups in order to intimidate a population or a government into the granting of their demands. Defining terrorism is not a straightforward matter. There is no single international accepted definition of what constitutes terrorism. Uh, is this maybe part of the problem? South Africa have defined the local picture on terrorism in the anti-terrorism bill published in uh, 15 November 2002. And maybe that gives us a little bit of a background on uh, the whole idea. If we look at the five basic types of terrorism, we can uh, single out state-sponsored terrorism, which consists of a terrorist act on a state or a government by a state or a government, dissident terrorism, which are terrorist groups which have rebelled against their government, terrorists on the left and right, which are groups rooted in political ideology, religious terrorism, which are terrorist groups which are extremely religious motivated. And then criminal terrorists, which are terrorist act used to aid in the crime and criminal profit. The last three are currently most probably the most active uh, functions and maybe what we will discuss in the SADC environment. Uh, a short historical view, maybe for the last just more than 20 years, we can remember that in uh, 96, South Africa really was shocked by the Pahat group and the, how this extremist front started to um, process. In the 1998s, really a, a big uh, um, uh, initial uh, instigation into South Africa with the Al-Qaeda bombing in, in Nairobi. And where one of the keepers, Samantha Luthwaith, a UK citizen, uh, was allegedly having a South African passport and staying for a while in South Africa where she could possibly have planned the bombings. Let us fast forward um, from this and look at last year December where a right-wing group was arrested, the Christian resistant movement. This started opening up a lot of very interesting things happening in the eastern shores of Sadek as well in the start of uh, July where if we read the, the headings, terrorism insurgency in Mozambique can spread to neighbors. ISIS links to these groups make the matters even worse. Uh, last week, a group of people were arrested in KZN for the kidnapping to alleged help funding of ISIS. I hope all of us are now focused and awake to see that this is getting very close and it's a very actual uh, piece of information. Hopefully also we'll describe it a lot better in our uh, discussion uh, with the panel later. So, because I'm an engineer, I always need mathematics or statistics to help me measure trends and status of the issue at hand. And the Institute of Economics and Peace have modeled an index factor called the Global Terrorism Index or GTI. This is almost a 100 page report detailing and ranking countries that uh, list the effects of terrorism. If we look at the detail to link to SADC, we can see that a lot have started changing in the past few years. In the 2017-2018 year, a SADC country have moved into the top four countries with deaths linked to terrorism uh, uh, passing the 100 mark. Is the mob problem moving closer to home? Maybe. Look at the index of attacks uh, from 2002 and we will see some very interesting things. In 2014, a lot of terrorism attacks started uh, um, declining. What is maybe more interesting is the change in the typical behavior of the terrorist groups. In 2018, the main attacks were based on facilities and infrastructure with hostage taking high but steadily lowering. Assassinations was still quite high. 
with this type of information, maybe um, with being a women month, uh, I specifically had a quick look at the statistics on women in tourism. Female suicide attacks have specifically grown in the African continent, as can be seen from the slide here on the left. Looking at the foreign fighters returning to home, less women than men are returning to Europe. This could have some interesting effects for the European countries. On the other hand, looking at the trends in Africa, we can see that uh, in this case, more women are returning to, uh, than men. Some other interesting statistics is that historically female suicide bombings has been 5% more lethal on average than male bombings. What is feeling terrorism? So look at the plot of internal armed conflict and we can see that terrorism follows this curve quite closely. The United Nations lists the following primary drivers of terrorism, lack of socioeconomic opportunity, marginalization and discrimination, poor governance, violating of human rights, prolonged and unresolved conflicts, as already stipulated in the plot, radicalization, economic gains, and I'm sure a lot of other ones that time just limit us. Looking at what the pulling factors is that motivate people to become a terrorist, the falling stands out. A collective grievance, victimization stemming from domination, op uh, oppression, subjugation or foreign intervention, distortion and misuse of beliefs, political ideologies, ethic and cultural differences, and leadership and social networks. Others like personal gain also start popping up more and more. So what does the index say about Southern African? The colors in the index depict uh, from a zero, no impact, to 10, very high impact in red. On the ranking in 2019, the three Southern countries that stood out is Mozambique at number 25. It's 15 index points up from the previous list. South Africa at 41 and Zimbabwe at 68. With that, let's step to the figures and look at why is Cabo Delgado of importance to us. It borders on Tanzania and Malavia, Malavia and will be effect, will have a major effect on the regional stability of the large part of the Sadek region. It is not a fight that started yesterday, it's from 2017 and almost a thousand people are killed and in this case hundred thousand, hundred thousand people that are displaced but I've heard and read in some of the papers that it is most probably more than 200,000. There's major investments that is supposed to help Mozambique to alleviate its poverty. Uh, this could now be lost. It will disrupt the humanitarian aid to this area that really needs it. Further, is this, really, uh, this area really getting into a cr crime syndicate environment with drugs, wildlife and natural resources in this organized crime, which you maybe also will remember from some of the sessions discussed this morning. So maybe to conclude from all of this detail is that a quote from Thomas Jefferson is maybe of importance. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. With all the discussions this morning focus on the core problems, the use of technology and statementship to tackle this problem. We should not be arrogant in the effects terrorism will have on the Sadek region. Let's listen to the panel discussion from some great experts in the field and I thank you. Thank you.